Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, this is very, very exciting because it is now time to cover one of the rarest subtypings in the entire series, our very first mythical Zoan being the Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix. The Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix, as stated in the intro, is a mythical Zoan type fruit that allows its user to transform into a blue phoenix, as well as a human phoenix hybrid form. It was consumed in the series by Mr. Pineapple himself, Marco, who served as the first division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. And as such, this fruit was first put on full display for us during the Marine Fada. Now, as most Zoans do, the name of this fruit takes on a broad subclassification in the Tori Tori portion, which simply means bird in Japanese. And it's a term we've come across before in the encyclopedia when we examine the Tori Tori no Mi model falcon, wielded by Pell. In this case, the latter portion of the name is model Fenikusu, which is an obvious Japanese adoption of the word Phoenix, which really did not translate nicely into the language. But rather interestingly, the kanji used for the Phoenix portion of the fruit can be read as Fushicho, which means immortal bird. So first up, because this is our introduction to the subclass, let's briefly talk about what a mythical Zoan is. So these fruits are said to be even rarer in the world than Logia type devil fruits, and they grant their users incredible power based on beings that are subject to legend, and more than likely did not actually exist within the One Piece world. And in addition to being granted the transformative properties that regular Zoans, carnivorous Zoans, and even ancient Zoans have, mythical Zoans are also given additional special abilities. In the case of the Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix, that would be the regenerative blue flames, making the user nigh on undamageable, by anything less than an absurd concentration of power. With that said, it would be a mistake to believe that the user of this fruit is effectively immortal, because one of the key things to bear in mind is that this regeneration is not instantaneous, nor can it be used unless the phoenix form is invoked. So for example, if you were to damage your hand, you'd have to become a phoenix to coat your hand in blue flames in order to begin that regeneration process. And the greater the damage one is incurred, the longer that process is going to take, meaning that it is very theoretically possible that under extreme conditions, a user of the Tori Tori no Mi model phoenix could be overwhelmed by relentless damage and not given the opportunity to heal and reset the body of the user back to its base state. And I suppose you could say that one good way around that would be to simply always remain in complete Phoenix form and thus always have those regenerative flames active. However, that also presents a problem in and of itself. The issue is that while the blue flames are an amazing advantage for the user, as a result of their healing nature, they can't actually be used in any sort of offensive manner against an opponent because they simply do no damage. If anything, they may even accidentally heal an opponent. So all of a sudden this fruit becomes a very tricksy existence to balance if you're using it for combat because you can't attack with the Phoenix body, but you can't regenerate with your regular fleshy vessel, meaning that you need to play this constant game of switching. And so a combat focused user would need to be supremely intelligent and hyper aware of their situation in order to make any decent use of this fruit whatsoever. And while we're on that topic, let's examine exactly how Marco has wielded this fruit to become one of the top tier powerhouses in the One Piece world. At the time of this recording, I would go so far as to say that Marco is the finest Zoan type user we've seen in the series because he has managed to master the art of turning select body parts into his beast form, which is something that we almost never see from any other users of this class. One exception to that would be Chopper because he can manipulate select aspects of his body through drug augmentation, but Marco is on a whole different level. He's seems to have complete mastery of when and what needs to take on the properties of the Blue Phoenix. And I should say that yes, it's entirely possible that this does come as a bonus feature of the mythical Zoan fruit because they're all pretty OP as is, but until proven otherwise, I'm going to continue giving Marco credit for the use of this fruit. Whatever the case, as a result, Marco uses the Tori Tori no Mi model Phoenix to take maximum advantage of both the Phoenix form and his regular body, often using advantages offered by the Phoenix, such as flight, to maneuver himself into a good position to attack with part of himself that remains human. So for example, a common combination would be transforming his arms into phoenix wings and then using his legs to attack with added force and angular advantage. And as such, Marco was a profound presence during the Paramount War, with one of his crowning moments being when he briefly fought Marine Admiral Kizaru one-on-one, -on -one, seemingly forcing the user of the Pika Pika no Mi into a stalemate situation, which speaks volumes for the sheer speed and strength of Whitebeard's first division commander. And later on during the conflict, Marco was also able to prove quite effective in defending against Admiral Akainu, using his blue flames to shield Luffy from the power of the Magu Magu no Mi, which has been referred to as the Devil Fruit with the highest defensive power in the series. Now, as for the potential of an awakening, this is one of those fruits where you really can't tell if such a thing is possible or even 
if it has already happened. Given how skilled of a user Marco is, it would not surprise me if he'd awakened his powers already, and perhaps that's why he's able to have such detailed mastery of his transformations. What I will say if this is indeed the case, is that in that situation, the Zoan would not subscribe to the typical Zoan awakening, which involves becoming a gigantic humanoid version of the animal in question, with a massive boost in power and regenerative abilities. And in regards to that second factor, the Phoenix fruit doesn't really need any help in that department. As a mythical devil fruit, it may also be the case, whereby an awakening is just far more difficult than a standard Zoan for whatever reason. Perhaps it's just an incredibly or even impossibly high standard to reach, or it might even be a purely mental thing from the perspective of the user. I mean, they've been granted a godlike sense of power right out of the box, so it may never even occur to them to attempt to push this devil fruit even further than that. And with that in mind, it's pretty insane to think that a user as proficient as Marco may not have even reached the full potential of the Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix, but at the same time, I can't deny that that is indeed a possibility. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a Phoenix human. In addition to everything we've discussed so far, it's also worth pointing out that the Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix actually mimics the properties of a low gear fruit very strongly, as in full Phoenix mode, the user becomes essentially intangible, almost as if they were the user of the Mera Mera no Mi in that regard. But it's also important to point out that this intangibility does not extend to Marco's human form, and the blue flames must be activated to achieve this low gear-esque effect. I also mentioned this briefly before, but the blue flames of this fruit can be used to heal others as well, although nowhere near to the extent that the user can heal themselves. When it comes to other other beings, the user has a strict limit on what they can do for them. However, whatever those healing capabilities are, they seem to come without condition. Unlike other fruits which have healing benefits, such as the Ope Ope no Mi or the Chiyu Chiyu no Mi, which both drain stamina and in extreme use, even life force. And finally, this is an obvious one, but it simply cannot be ignored. The Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix grants the user the power of flight. And this is something that really does not get enough attention and is incredibly overpowered within the world of One Piece, where so much of it is covered in the liquid substance that is deadly to devil fruit wielders. But the user of this fruit does not have to worry about that whatsoever. To summarize, this fruit is pretty damn insane. There's no real way around that. Upon consuming it, you will inherit powers like nothing this world has ever seen, and that can really only be rivaled by other mythical Zoan fruits. With that said, I don't think it's phenomenal as most fans will make it out to be. I do, however, think that Marco's use of the fruit is phenomenal, and he makes it look a lot easier than it would be in reality. This fruit would require incredibly strict training and a grand master level mind to make full use of the versatility that it could grant you. However, for the everyday person, you will still find amazing benefits in near infinite regeneration and casual flight. So I don't think there is a single person on this planet who this fruit would not radically redefine the life of. And as such, it is impossible not to recommend this fruit. Consume immediately upon sight. And with that, we are going to commit the Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next week, we're going to be looking at yet another absolutely insane power that was even briefly mentioned in this very video, being the world-shaking magma devastation that is the Magu Magu no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply it to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Tori Tori no Mi Little Phoenix. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Why did you fall out of love with Attack on Titan? It's fantastic now, and has evolved so much as a manga. Still the best One Piece YouTuber out there. Well, first of all, thank you for the kind compliment. And as for your actual question, I fell out of love with Attack on Titan because of the manga, to be honest. For some context, I watched Attack on Titan when the first season was airing, I loved it, and then I tried the manga and the art put me off so, so hard. It's just not for me, and that's fine, not everything is. And I also do recognize that the art has gotten a hell of a lot better since then, but still, I don't know at this point, I would just prefer to wait because the anime is in a decent production cycle. That's another thing though, it took so damn long for season two to come out, that I kind of just stopped caring about Attack on Titan, but I do still keep up with the anime at least, and I love season three earlier this year, and I'm somewhat eagerly anticipating season four. 
Did you go to university slash college? I did, yes, university specifically, where I studied design for theater and television for three years and then graduated with a coveted Bachelor of Arts, which I don't think has ever been relevant to me, even though I went on to work professionally in the world of theater. I mean, I probably shouldn't be so harsh, but you don't study arts for the qualification at the end. You do so for everything you pick up along the way. The piece of paper is absolutely meaningless. I could have dropped out the day before graduation and it would have had no bearing whatsoever on where my future went on to take me. And I guess I say that because in most university courses, that degree means everything. It gets you job interviews and stuff. But if you're looking to pursue the arts, then I would look very carefully at university before making a decision about whether or not it's the best option for you. Because everything you can get there, you can attain elsewhere and probably much cheaper as well. Depending of course, on the area of study. If you and Zoro were in a room together, just hanging out, maybe drinking some beer or some wine, and Zoro turns to you and says, can I cut off your nipple? Would you do it? I know my answer. Uh, look, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm quite fond of my nipples. I am keen to hear your answer though, which I've noticed was very conveniently not supplied.